Welcome to the MapReduce demonstration screencast for Gigaspace's ZAP 8.0. Traditional computation tasks are serially managed, homogeneous processes in which all data goes through a single computation process to yield a result. In today's clustered environments, this is wasteful. Not only does it not use the large number of cores available to modern data centers, but it also funnels everything to a single point, wasting network cycles as well as leaving CPU cycles unused. MapReduce is a technique by which a task is broken down into multiple separate independent requests which are processed in parallel. Then, those requests' results are collated into a single response. The phase in which the task is broken into multiple requests is the map phase. The collation of the request's data is the reduction phase. The requirements for MapReduce are really pretty simple, but very important. First, you have to have multiple cores to run the maps tasks on. Otherwise, you're going to burden a single core with the context switches, which will make it run slower, not faster, although the gains in simplicity may be worth it to you. Second, your data has to be distributed to where your processes are going to run. If your processes have to talk to a remote database of some sort, that communication will eat up whatever gains that MapReduce would have gotten you, and might create contention for your data depending on how you're accessing it. Needless to say, Gigaspace's Zap does not have this particular problem. Third, your tasks have to be independent. Amdahl's law factors heavily in this. If any tasks rely on the results of a different task, then you're going to introduce serial processing, and that goes directly against what MapReduce is about. Your data should be distributed in a way that represents a natural mapping. If your data is randomly distributed, it can still work, but it isn't very optimal. So let's talk about how MapReduce in Gigaspaces works. Our example will be something conceptually very simple, counting marbles of different sizes by colors. You might be asking, what's so complex about counting marbles? Well, consider if you have four people in a bag of marbles. You now have a lot of options. You could hand the bag to one person who counts all of the marbles. The other three remain idle. This is the traditional approach where you funnel everything to a single process. Or you could split the bag into fourths and hand a quarter of the marbles to each person. Each person then looks at each marble and counts. At the end, you look at each person's totals and add them together. If you were able to make sure that each person had only one color of marble, you could make the count go very rapidly. They wouldn't have to look at the colors at all. They'd simply count the marbles and come back to you with, the, with their color and their count. This is efficient, and, is the only, and the only requirement is that we be able to make sure each person only gets one color of marble, or even natural separation would work. Thankfully, Gigaspace's Zap enables that very easily with the space routing annotation. So let's look at an example of our marble counting implementation. First, we have our marble. The marble simply has a color and a size, as well as you know an ID that helps us identify each marble uniquely. It's routed by the color, and we also have an index on that color as well. The next thing that we look at is the uh, actual runner that we're going to use, which is a simple abstract class which does some space, in, space initialization and also shutdown. Uh, this is actually programmatic configuration. We could use Spring for this, and we're actually designed to use Spring for this, but we're not doing so here. The next thing we need to look at is the distributed task itself, which is our count marble serial task. The reason we're calling it serial task is because it counts each color locally in the, in the local space serially. We could actually separate this out to, uh, to run these in parallel, and I actually have an example of this running, but for simplicity, we'll do it this way. So what we do is we actually have an implementation that returns an enum map through the execute phase. What this does is it builds a, a map, then for each color, looks locally into this non-clustered space here looks locally for each color and builds a count, and then it puts that count into a map and returns it. The reduction phase, which does not get distributed but runs locally only, uh, basically takes a list of the results, which means that it will get the results of multiple ex in, uh, executions of this method, 
and it returns a single uh, a single reduction uh, map itself here, as you can see. It then looks loops through the uh, through the counts and then adds them together right here. Now this code actually looks fairly complicated if you look at the signatures and everything like that. The reason is because of the results being asynchronous. We're actually running everything asynchronously here. So we've got a lot of boilerplate in the, in the uh, method signatures that we wouldn't have otherwise. But because of the, just the nature of asynchronous execution in Java, we're running into this, into this process. The actual runner is very simple. We create a task. We then send it to the space, really. We're just executing the space. It's automatically distributed because of the nature of the count marbles task being a distributed task here. Um, then we simply iterate through the results and you know, print out the, the sum totals. Running this is really pretty simple. Let's go ahead and, and run it. You can see that it's building the, the serial connection and then it runs. Now, you saw how quickly it came back. And this, for this particular task, it's really very simple. This would run quickly no matter what, although we could slow it down by fetching everything locally. But what we're seeing here is actually the process running remotely on another machine entirely, where each section, each partition of our grid is counting locally and returning the results. And then this, tab, this process right here is collating them into a single result, which we iterate through here, and we're just getting a sum of those totals. What you're seeing here is a very simple task. I mean, nobody would actually, you know, count marbles this way. I mean, you'd be better off just, ex you know, executing a single JDBC statement and letting the, a single database, you know, collate the results. If you were sharding, however, the process would be very expensive. And this is a way of using those shards to do everything locally, where you can run, you know, very quickly, and you can actually do more complex processing. This is just a count. But if you actually had a process where you were, you know, uh, doing inventory updates or something, you know, where you were actually doing forecasting or Monte Carlo sampling, any number of things. Expensive tasks, here what we'd be doing is we'd be distributing those tasks to every processor available to us, where instead of having one process or one database server or even three database servers collating results, you're able to use everything that participates in your grid to do everything that you need to accomplish, which leverages every, all of your power and also saves you money because you're not wasting time and letting those you know, servers stand idle. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. It's been very quick and very simple, but we actually have a lot more to, you know, available in this API. We have ways to automatically apply reductions and things like that. Um, and I hope that this has kind of whet your appetite to learn more. Thank you very much.